Did you know that more than 99% of the 4 billion species that have evolved on Earth are now gone? In the last five centuries alone, at least 900 species are no longer, but we've got some teetering on the edge. But to incorrectly quote Arnold Schwarzenegger, they'll be back. From the Chavan tiger to the kangaroo rat, here are 20 dead animals scientists are close to reviving. <sighs> Number 20. Titanoboa. Out of all dead animals, scientists are close to reviving. Perhaps one of the last ones you'd want back is the Titanoboa. Unfortunately, this massive nope rope could be making a comeback in the future. Titanoboa were giant snakes that could grow up to lengths of around 45 feet while weighing about 2,500 pounds. They once roamed the Earth about 58 to 60 million years ago and were were found in northeastern Colombia. You might assume that they were apex predators given their size, however, from the fossils we've found, they seemed to prefer fish. It's also believed that they reached the sizes they did because the climate was much warmer when they were around compared to now. This tells scientists that animals and plants can cope with high temperatures. As the temperatures rise once more, there's potential for the Titanoboa, or something like it, to return in the future. However, scientists have been quick to point out that we won't see Titanoboa in our lifetime. Apparently, it takes a substantial amount of geological time to develop a new species, so it might be millions of years before giant snakes make a comeback. Well, that's a relief. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Australian Night Parrot it's not very often that an animal comes back from the dead, but Australians were overjoyed when they learned that one of their birds, thought to be extinct for around a century, was actually still alive. Night parrots are small parrots endemic to Australia that are described as among the most elusive and mysterious birds. We first learned about them in 1845, but the last living specimen was collected in 1912. From then until 1979, no one ever saw a feather of one of these birds, so we just assumed they were extinct. However, there had always been a few unconfirmed reports, and then people found two dead specimens in 1990 and 2006. Were Australian night parrots still around? It sure seemed that way. In 2013, wildlife photographer and naturalist John Young actually managed to capture photos and footage of one in western Queensland, although there has been some controversy about his findings in recent years. The most recent sighting of one of these parrots was in August 2021, when the Mar 2 Rangers took a photograph of one in flight in a remote part of western Australia. We have no idea just how many night parrots are alive, but they are listed as endangered, with a possible population of 50 to 249. Number 18. Elephant Shrews Scientists might have thought they needed to revive elephant shrews. They seemed lost to science for at least 50 years, and the only way people got to see them up close was by visiting a museum that happened to have a dead specimen. And the only way people got to see them up close was by visiting a museum that happened to have a dead specimen. But that all changed in 2019. Researchers working in the Horn of Africa rediscovered them, not only are they not extinct, but their population might not even be in as much trouble as scientists first thought. Elephant shrews are unique little mouse-like critters with a long, thin trunk to suck up ants. 
a scaly tail, big eyes, and powerful hind legs. They are related to elephants, manatees, and aardvarks, and can hop at speeds of around 18 miles per hour. When we hadn't seen them for about 50 years, they were put on the Global Wildlife Conservation's Lost Species List, which is essentially one step towards declaring something extinct. In 2019, researchers found what they believe to be elephant trues and had local groups confirm their findings. According to Duke University researcher Stephen Heritage, it was a fantastic experience. They opened up a trap, saw one inside, and couldn't believe what they'd found. Interestingly, an Association Djibouti nature spokesperson, which was part of the study, said they never considered the elephant trues to be lost. Although they were happy that the study brought the critters back into the spotlight. Number 17. Pinocchio Lizard Pinocchio lizards, also known as the horned anole, are lizards with short limbs, small bodies, and a long, Pinocchio-like proboscis, measuring up to 0.8 inches long. For about half a century, we thought they were extinct, and researchers have been looking for several years to find one in the cloud forests of Ecuador. These unique lizards were first discovered in 1953, but there were no signs from the 1960s until 2005. In 2005, an ornithologist saw one crossing a road in northwest Ecuador, and they've been playing the longest game of hide-and-seek ever since. However, that all changed in 2013. The team from Tropical Herping, who had been looking for three years, finally found one in the dead of night in the Mindo cloud forest. They were walking along a stream after midnight and spotted one on a branch, sleeping, covered in dew. They can camouflage themselves pretty well during the day, so the chances of finding them are much higher at night. They are now considered endangered, and only about five localities are known within a five-mile distance of each other. They are believed to live in primary and secondary vegetation along a dirt road. Number 16. Coelacanth Fish our oceans are pretty massive, and we don't even know half of what's lurking in them, so it's probably not surprising that we thought a fish species that existed 420 million years ago wasn't extinct. That was until we realized it wasn't. 420 million years ago was extinct. That was until we realized it wasn't. Scientists always thought the coelacanth went extinct with the dinosaurs, but it it was recently discovered alive and well. In the Indian Ocean, South Africa shark hunters found the rare species off the coast of Madagascar. Before then, there was a potential capture of one by marine fishers in 1938, who supposedly caught one in a gillnet around the same area. It's probably not surprising that we don't see them often, and believe they were extinct. They are described as four-legged fossil fish, and prefer to live in undersea canyons about 1,640 feet below the ocean's surface. Even though they can be quite large fish, weighing up to about 200 pounds, they just don't frequent the same areas we do. However, now that we know what we're looking for, we'll probably see more of them. According to a study published in the SA Journal of Science, there have been at least 334 reports of captures since 2020. Number 15. Javan Tiger the Javan tiger was one of nine tiger subspecies that used to be a dominant predator on the tropical island of Java. Their populations were huge during the 18th century, so much so that Dutch colonizers encouraged people to kill them. Most Javan locals only killed the tigers if they harmed people, but as human populations boomed, human attacks increased, and tiger numbers dwindled. As a result, it reached the point where hunters only saw 
a few or none by the 1940s, and the remaining populations fled to national parks and mountainous areas to escape from humans and their killing ways. The last positive confirmed sighting was in 1976, and sadly, they were declared extinct by 2003. Although not everyone is given up hope of them making a comeback, in 2017 a wildlife ranger took a photo of what we believe is the first definitive sighting of these supposed extinct tigers in over four decades. According to Mamat Ramat, head of the conservation of Jean Coulon National Park, the area in which the photo was taken used to be a Javan tiger habitat, and he hopes they're still there. However, some people speculate that the animal in the picture was a Javan leopard, which is critically endangered. Number 14. Pava Aleblanca Pava aleblanca, also known as the white-winged guan, is a large bird from the forests of Peru's north coast that we've thought was extinct for a long time. These slender black birds have white light feathers, a blue-gray beak with a black tip, and a gray-pink face. They also have long tails and long pink legs that make them stand around 31.5 inches tall. They were first discovered by naturalist Ladislo Tax in 1878, but were later declared extinct. Around 100 years later, they were rediscovered in Olmos, north of Peru, by Sebastian Chinche, who had been tasked with the job of looking by conservationist Gustavo del Solar, who had dedicated much of his time to trying to find this bird. After it had been positively identified, the Congress of the Republic of Peru prohibited hunting, extraction, transportation, and export of the bird for commercial purposes. Ever since their discovery in the 1970s, conservation experts have made them their priority. They're still critically endangered, but we know of at least 250 specimens. There's hope for that number to grow in the future. Number 13. Woolly Mammoth Woolly mammoths lived during the Pleistocene and went extinct in the Holocene epoch. They were about the same size as our modern-day African elephants, with males standing at up to 11.2 feet tall and weighing about 6 tons. They were covered in fur, had long curved tusks, and were adept at living in cold environments. After a genome project concluded in 2015, it was deemed that we could revive the species through several means, so there's always a possibility that we'll see woolly mammoths walking among us in the years to come. Or perhaps they already are. A video surfaced online in recent years that showed what appeared to be a woolly mammoth crossing a river in Siberia. A government-employed engineer took the video, and while it was blurry, it did look kinda mammoth-like, in saying that it also just looked like a bear with a fish in its mouth. But even if that wasn't a mammoth, science is an exciting thing. The company Colossal Laboratories and Biosciences wants to turn elephants into mammoths or mammoth-like creatures. According to the University of California ecologist Douglas McLawley, there's hope and hype that de-extinction will save ecosystems from failing. Number 12. Ivory-Billed Woodpecker the ivory-billed woodpecker is a striking bird that used to be found in abundance in forests around Cuba and the southern United States. Hunting and habitat destruction caused their numbers to rapidly plummet until they were eventually classified as critically endangered. However, as it has been about 80 years since we had a confirmed sighting of an ivory-billed woodpecker, the Fish and Wildlife Service plans to remove the bird from their endangered species list. They don't think it's endangered at all, they think it's extinct. The last time we had a sighting that could potentially be an ivory-billed woodpecker was in 1944, when a wildlife artist was sent out to sketch a female bird. There have been dozens of alleged sightings since then, but most turned out to be another bird, like the pelated woodpecker. But passionate wildlife experts are determined to keep looking for the elusive bird in the hopes that it's still alive. They're running out of time. 
though, as after a virtual public hearing was held at the start of 2022, the Fish and Wildlife Service was going to make its final decision about the bird's classification by late 2022. Number 11. Pygmy Tarsier Pygmy Tarsiers are nocturnal primates from central Sulawesi in Indonesia. They are absolutely tiny, only measuring up to about 4 inches and weighing less than 2 ounces. They have tan, gray, or brown-red fur, furry tails, large eyes, and nails on all hands and feet. We speak about Pygmy Tarsier in the present tense, but for much of the 20th century, most people talked about them in the past tense because they believed that them to be extinct. They hadn't been seen in decades, but that changed in 2000. Indonesian scientists accidentally killed one during a rap trapping exercise. Imagine accidentally killing what could possibly be the very last of a species. How embarrassing. Fortunately for them, it wasn't the last one. A research team found four of them in Lower Lindu National Park in 2008, which was the first time any had been seen alive since the 1920s. They captured two males and a female using nets while a fourth escaped. After putting radio collars on them to track their movements, they were released. The good news is that we don't have to say they're extinct, but the bad news is that they're still considered endangered. Because of their elusive nature and mysterious reproductive habits, we don't actually know how many of them there are in the wild. Number 10. Australian Bandicoot when animals end up on the brink of extinction, there's generally not much we can do. I mean, often we do our best to boost their numbers, but we're very rarely successful. But Australians can puff their chests out and boast, because they successfully changed the status of the eastern barred bandicoot from extinct in the wild to endangered. There used to be an abundance of these tiny critters in the wild, but habitat that destruction and foxes caused their numbers to plummet on the mainland. Conservation efforts have been ongoing for the last 30 years and have paid off. There used to be about 150 left and now there are around 1,500. Millions of dollars were invested into captive breeding programs and creating predator-free sites protected by trained dogs. Some were also moved to fox-free islands. Now they appear to be thriving. It's about time Australia had some good luck because, according to World Wildlife Fund Australia, this country has the worst mammal extinction rate in the world. In saying that, the bandicoots were the ones that put in all the hard work. They got traits that make them easy to reintroduce to different areas, and they also breed quickly. Bandicoots can have up to five litters a year, and their pregnancy only last a little under two weeks. Number 9. Cuban Selenodon Cuban selenodons are small mammals endemic to Cuba with toxic saliva that acts as a venom. As you probably know, that's quite a rare trait, which is why it's crucial to protect these animals at all costs. The problem is that they are incredibly difficult to find, so much so that experts keep thinking they've gone extinct. German naturalist Wilhelm Peters was the first person to discover them in 1861, and only 30 six have been caught. By 1950, many experts thought they were extinct because none had been found since 1890. However, after actively searching for them, we saw more of them in 1974 and 1975, and there have been occasional sightings at the eastern end of Cuba in central and western Orient province. Aside from one sighting in 1999, the most recent was in 2003. 
a Cuban Selenodon, was brought in for scientific study and was released back into the wild after two days. There doesn't appear to have been another sighting since, and to be fair, there are a number of reasons for that. Aside from limited numbers in the wild, their living arrangements also contribute. They are nocturnal burrowers, meaning they live underground, and are rarely seen casually walking around the forest. If you do get an opportunity to spot them, it would likely be as they search the forest floors at night for fungi, roots, invertebrates, and insects. Although they do put their venom to good use. They can use it to kill frogs, rodents, birds, and lizards. They are also not immune to their own poison, which means they can get into fights with their own kind and die. Number 8. Eastern Cougar Eastern cougars are extinct in the United States and possibly most of Canada. Or are they? We just don't know. While they have been declared officially extinct in the United States, there isn't enough data to know whether they still roam freely in Ontario, Quebec, Nova Scotia, and New Brunswick. They are classed as gravely endangered in the north of eastern Canada, and it's believed there might be some in western Canada, as they used to have quite an extensive range. We haven't been able to scope out every inch of North America to know if there are eastern cougars we don't know about. We actually thought they were extinct decades ago, but sightings were first reported in different parts of Canada in the 1970s and 1980s. Years passed without a single sighting until 1993, when scat and tracks of cougars were found in New Brunswick. Later in 2006, there were several unconfirmed sightings, with a slight chance that they're not extinct. You might think that organizations are doing all they can to track them down and try to bolster their numbers if they find them. Unfortunately, that's not the case. Until there is actual confirmation that they exist, no direct recovery actions are being taken. The good news is that if some still exist, their environments are probably pretty good enough to sustain them. Experts say that the deer population in New Brunswick could support around 250 cougars, and we just need to tackle our logging and mining activities to avoid driving their populations away. Number 7. The South Island Takahi the South Island Takahi is a flightless swampin from New Zealand. Maori hunted it extensively, and by the time Europeans described it in 1847, they were only able to do so from fossils. A live bird was captured in 1859, three more in the 19th century, and another in 1898. However, they were presumed extinct after the last capture for nearly 50 years. But in a stroke of good luck during a planned search, New Zealand doctor and tramper Geoffrey Orbell rediscovered them in 1948 in Murkison Mountain on the South Island. From that point on, New Zealanders have been working hard to bring this unique swamp in from the brink of extinction. And just like their neighbors with the bandicoot, they've had great success. Sure, the Takahi is still a threatened species, but their population is growing by about 10% each year, at least at least 106 have been recorded as living in the Murkison Mountains, and another 200 live in predator-free areas across the country. The hope is to slowly introduce them back into places where they have been extinct for decades, and the long-term goal is to have a self-sustaining population in excess of 500. As of 2019, there were 418 known Takahi, so they're well on their way. Number 6. Hula Painted Frog Decades ago, we used to destroy habitats without thinking about the animals that lived there. It still happens in some parts of the world today. We have a problem with a particular environment, so we take drastic action to appease human populations. That was basically what happened in northern Israel, causing the Hula Painted Frog to go extinct. The frogs were abundant in the Hula Valley in Israel, but the valley's marshes were drained to make the land arable and eliminate malaria. Ah. 
While part of the wetlands were turned into a natural reserve, experts believe that the unique frog hadn't survived the drastic blow to its habitat. Four have been found in 1940, another one in the 1950s, and that was it until they were declared extinct in 1996. They weren't done as many amphibian species are classed as endangered or extinct, with the leading causes listed as habitat loss and fungal disease. Although something incredible happened about half a century after the hula painted frog was classed as extinct, they were spotted again in northern Israel, their only known habitat in the country. According to the Israeli Nature Authority, it seems as though their population started bouncing back when water started being diverted to the Hulu region to reverse the ecological damage resulting from the disappearance of the marshes. They are still considered critically endangered, but scientists have discovered several hundred of these frogs while searching in water at night. In 52 of the Hula Valley waterholes they looked at, they found populations in 17 of them. Number 5. Bermuda Petrel Bermuda petrels were island-dwelling birds that used to live their best lives away from the devastation and destruction that humans have been known to cause. When Christopher Columbus sailed around the uninhabited Bermuda Triangle, there were up to one million of these nocturnal seabirds going about their business. But in the 1500s, Spanish sailors passed through and it was the beginning of the end. They brought rats and pigs with them, and these animals feasted on the petrels and the rags. Just 20 years after the British settlement, the Bermuda petrel was declared extinct. Well, that's what we thought for four long centuries. However, in 1951, a local teenager, David Wingate, was with a party of naturalists who discovered 17 nesting pairs close to Castle Harbor in Bermuda. That young teen became the first conservation worker in Bermuda, and he worked tirelessly to re-establish their populations. He's now in his 80s and frequently visits the seabirds to see how they're getting on. And how are they getting on, you ask? Fine and dandy? While they are still considered endangered and conservationists are continually battling rat populations to limit the risk to the birds. But there are now 132 breeding pairs that produced 72 chicks in 2019. Surely it can only get better from here on in. Number 4. Kangaroo Rat as of 2017, no one has seen a San Quentin kangaroo rat for about three decades. The last reported sighting was in the shrublands of Mexico's Baja, California. By 1994, Mexican authorities had declared them endangered, and the word extinct was also bandied about. We accepted their fate and moved on, but the kangaroo rats had other ideas. Researchers found four kangaroo rats in their survey traps during a routine mammal inventory in the the region. As none of them had seen them before, they had to look at photos and museum specimens to ensure they really did have what they thought they did. And they have a few distinctive features, so it probably wasn't all that difficult. The rats are about 4.7 inches long with tuft-like tails and long hind legs that let them run at speeds of 6.2 miles an hour and jump to heights of 6.5 feet. They also have cute little rotund bodies, rounded ears, and large eyes. The rats were a key species in dry areas of western North America and were prized for spreading seeds and feeding predators like foxes and coyotes. While they used to live in great numbers along the Pacific coast of Baja, California, intensive agriculture began having a huge impact. When the creation of farmland in the 1970s caused their habitat and food to disappear, the kangaroo rats vanished with it. Researchers think they've been able to make a comeback due to a decrease in farming in the past decade related to water shortages. Number 3. Black Leopards Seeing a leopard in the wild is unlikely enough for most people, but seeing a black leopard? That's even rarer. The last confirmed observation of a black leopard, also known as a black panther, was in Ethiopia in 1909. So to see one with photo and video proof is a monumental occasion. A team of biologists had heard about previous sightings of black leopards in Africa, so they set up remote cameras to track populations in Laikipia County. In 
Kenya and intensified their search in areas where they heard people had seen black leopards. It took a few months, but they finally captured actual footage of the black leopards that so many people said they'd seen. Seeing black leopards is rare because their coat takes on the color due to melanism. Melanism is a gene mutation resulting in an overproduction of pigment. As you might know, the opposite of melanism is albinism, which is little or no melanin production. Melanism can be found in about 11% of leopards worldwide, but most of these leopards live in Southeast Asia. Finding one in East Africa is remarkable. According to Will Burard Lucas, who was lucky enough to photograph the leopard, it was his longtime dream. Will said it remained the stuff of dreams, and no one he knew had ever seen one in the wild. He never thought he would either. Number 2. Lord Howe Island Stick Insect Lord Howe Island stick insects are critically endangered, wingless, nocturnal insects that only feed on one shrub species. There are now thought to be only around 30 individuals in one population left. There used to be a vast number of these insects on Lord Howe Island in Australia. However, when black rats made their great entrance in the 1920s, they were decimated quite quickly. We actually believed they were extinct, but climbers on Ball's Pyramid in the 1960s, found fresh dead remains, which sparked a new search for them. In 2001, a survey of the same area where those remains were found led to a small population of them being located about 213 feet above sea level. Two females and a nymph were found on a tea tree. The researchers also discovered plant debris at the base, moistened by water, which they believe the insects used as their daytime refuge. Another survey was performed the following year, and 24 insects were found in total along with a dozen of five nearby shrubs. Just 10 could be sexed and identified as eight females and two males. When they were rediscovered, experts knew very little about them, but what they did know was that they had to try and change their trajectory toward extinction, so they took two breeding pairs to mainland Australia in 2003, and Melbourne Zoo has been involved in captive breeding ever since. The goal is to make Lord Howe Island a rat-free island and reintroduce free-range stick insects to the island once more. Number 1. Crested Gecko can you believe something as easily found as the crested gecko was once thought to be extinct just 30 years ago? Today, they're one of the most popular pets in the world. Crested geckos are believed to be ideal pets for beginner reptile owners because they don't need much space and have basic eating requirements. They also don't need a diet of insects to survive. Wild crested geckos have been recorded since around 1866, but scientists were concerned that they might have died out by the late 20th century century. In 1994, they found some on the Isle of Pines, and their concerns were alleviated. Upon bringing some into captivity, it was realized that they didn't mind mating in captivity. In fact, it came naturally to them. Now breeders hatch them in their thousands, so there's no concern about them going extinct anytime soon. Crested geckos are native to southern New Caledonia and have three distinct populations. One is on the Isle of Pines, and there are also two populations on the main island of Grand Terre. They grow up to 10 inches long and are easily identified by their hair-like projections above their eyelashes, which look like eyelashes. Currently, their conservation status is listed as vulnerable. There are so many animals we haven't been able to save, but there are so many we've also worked hard to bring back from the brink of extinction. If you could bring back any animal from extinction, which one would it be and why? Also, check out our other cool stuff shown up on screen right now. See you next time.